Well, getting boys engaged in learning can be a struggle for parents and educators alike. If you're not, though, our next guest has some strategies to help get boys motivated in the classroom. Edmund Dixon is an educator. He's also the author of Helping Boys Learn. Welcome to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, so you have two um, versions of your book, um, one for teachers, one for parents. They're slightly different. We're going to dig into them in a moment. But I just um, want to begin with you by bringing up some, some graphs, some stats. And these are the latest results from the Pan-Canadian Assessment of Science, Reading, and Math. So let's bring it up. Let's bring up the first one. This is science, and we're looking at uh, male and female students in Ontario. So when you look at science, they're on par. They do just as well. Okay, let's bring up the math one. A very slight difference, almost negligible. Boys doing slightly better in math than, than their female counterparts. And then let's bring up reading, because this is where the, the striking difference really is. There you have it, a significant difference between male and female students with girls substantially ahead. OK, Edmund, so what's behind that? Math and science, boys and girls on par. When it comes to reading, there is a huge difference. Well, that's something that actually starts from when boys are very young. Uh, boys and girls' uh, brains wire differently for uh, oral language, and that's speaking and, and listening, and that's the basis of reading and writing in school. And so when a boy enters school, on average in North America, he's about 18 months behind girls in oral language. And if somehow that deficit doesn't get made up, then he tends not to be as strong in reading and writing. So those statistics are very much the kinds of things I've seen. So they're a year and a half behind when they start. They're doing okay in math and science. They're doing well in a lot of cases. Am I, am I supposed to, I have two young boys, I was telling you this, not school aged yet, but am I supposed to be alarmed by these numbers and these stats? No, but I think parents need to be aware. Uh, we are in a different age now and, and the, the testing stats really only tell a very small part of the story. The deeper story, which I've seen in the 30 years uh, increasing, in the 30 years I was in education and now doing research and, and going around North American speaking, is that boys' engagement in school is dropping off. Um, and it, that's not good because in the past, if boys weren't as engaged, there were other things they could do in society. Um, I live out in Oshawa. I taught high school in a inner city school, South Oshawa school, and I remember some boys who weren't doing as well. Um, they started disappearing around 15 or 16. Their dad had actually got them a job at the Motors. Mm. Those jobs aren't there anymore. You cannot get jobs at the level we need to have them without a higher level of education. And we see now in the past 10 years or so, we see boys less and less engaged, dropping out of school earlier across North America and not entering higher education as much. And if you were to talk to a lot of teachers and parents, they would point to this kind of disengagement in boys' learning. So the, the, the oral language is something that can be remedied. You can have that fixed. But if you don't have engagement and motivation, then you have a real problem. All right. I mean, so you, you know, there was a time, it, 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 you say that, you know, boys went and worked at, at the Motors, General Motors in Oshawa. And I'm wondering, sort of, and the broader point, are these changes that you're seeing, I mean, are they a recent phenomenon, or have things always been this way between boys and girls? I think there have always been differences uh, because it has to do with the way the brain wires and, and the evo evolution of even our roles in society. Not what they are now, but for millennia, the kinds of things that males and females did tended to help them to focus better in certain areas. And, you know, everything I talk about is really put in that mode of looking at where someone has strengths and let's build on their strengths. And in our society today, that's what we really need to do, particularly for the boys. All right, we, we mentioned um, reading, math, and science. What other areas have you observed where boys are lacking? Well, the, as, as I mentioned before, the idea of being engaged and motivated across the board is a real challenge. What you find is that boys many times are not as engaged in class. Other statistics you could have found would show boys do homework less often than girls. Um, boys listen less often in class. Um, they tend not to put as much effort over longer term in, in a lot of things. And, um, and of course, they have higher dropout rates mm. on the other end and lower entry rates into university, college and university. OK, let's flip it on, the head, on its head. When I look at girls, then, um, by comparison, we would say, well, they're largely successful. So what do you attribute the success of girls to? Well, some people would say that schools are really set up well for girls, basically for some of the reasons I mentioned. The oral language advantage, what, what, are, what do you need to do really well when you come into school? Sit still, 
listen, speak well, and um, girls' brain wiring tends to be better as they start. Um, so I think the other thing, too, is our new world, our information age, our socially connected world, plays right to a lot of the natural strengths that women have. You know, there is still the glass ceiling, and I wouldn't pretend there isn't, but across North America, you see more and more women moving into middle management positions, in particular because of the skills they have, social emotional intelligence, the ability to read the room, to not have to be the alpha all the time, um, to listen and build a team. Those are some things that come a little more naturally to them than some boys, and part of that is because of, uh, well, part of it is physio physiological too, because boys release testosterone uh, and I didn't know this, uh, I, you know, we always think of testosterone as adult males or teenage boys, but actually, um, starting around age five, six, and seven, little boys start to release jolts of testosterone whenever they set a goal and achieve it. And if you have a boy that age, you often notice he gets really competitive, he tends to like a lot of games and things like that, because he gets a physiological feeling of well-being when he sets a goal and achieves it. Girls release testosterone as well, but not nearly to the, the levels. They release more of the um, uh, neurochemical oxytocin, which is called the tend and befriend chemical. And they release that often when a group gets along well, when people talk and, and listen to each other, etc. And so if you put those two in a dynamic of a classroom, where a classroom, the traditional classroom is a teacher teaches, the students listen, and then they do the work they need to. And you can see why for a girl, that might not be, that might be good. Okay, let me push back a little bit. Here we are in 2015, and I'm wondering, aren't you just reinforcing gender stereotypes that we have been trying to overcome and combat for many years now? Well, there's a difference between gender stereotyping and physiological differences that come from males and females. Okay. And those are the things I'm talking about. In the end, what we want is not that one group is privileged or succeeds over another. What we want is that every child gets what they need. When you look at your children and you have girls and boys, you can see that you treat them a little differently, right? Because they react a little differently to how you treat them. And ideally, when we do that with both boys and girls, they reach the levels that they need to. Those things I talked about, social emotional intelligence, the ability to work in a team, and those, those are things males have to develop. And a lot of times they have challenges with that. So what I'm uh, proposing are ways to help them get to where we want them to without, um, without uh, not privileging the girls, for example. The things that I talk about trying to help um, boys succeed in class are actually good for girls in class. We're going to talk about them. You've got six secrets and, and we'll go through them one by one in just a couple of minutes. But I want to ask you this. When you look at the Ontario education system, uh, for instance, is there a difference between how boys are performing who go to private school versus public school? Uh, there, I can't say there's a huge difference. One thing I did find out, which is very interesting, is in North America, boys are in the lowest quartile of performers in every school and every jurisdiction, no matter what the socioeconomics. So S poverty, other factors, don't, well don't off factor schools, etc. There, there are parents who are in the wealthiest neighborhoods in Ontario who are very concerned about their sons being disengaged and not doing well in school, and their parents who are in impoverished areas who feel the same thing. So that sort of indicates that we're not just talking about a socioeconomic thing, we're talking about something that has to do with physiology and, um, and how they approach the world. And so uh, let me explain, if I could, a little bit about um, uh, how testosterone affects boys. I mentioned that they get that jolt. Well, they also lose testosterone when they set goals and they don't achieve it. Um, and that's very powerful, even in men. Um, they've done uh, studies where they've tested the testosterone levels in men who are watching soccer matches in Europe, and the people watching the winning team have twice as much testosterone in their, their bodies as, as the people on the losing team. So you have this feeling almost of a little bit of negativity when you set those goals and you don't achieve it. There's nothing wrong with that. That happens in video games, that happens in sports. But imagine if you're that boy who's 18 months behind coming into school. Your brain wiring as well wires much more for movement than girls. So you like to move. You like to see things bang. You like to jostle. You like to put hands on, as they call in school. Um, you have a hard time sitting still. So you're in a, uh, you come into school, and you have to sit still, and a teacher is talking, and you have to listen. Except for in gym class. Except for gym class, right. But the things we talked about, math, science, reading, writing, all of those things, they're asked to sit and listen much longer than they would be in gym class. And then what happens is 
if they're not doing as well and they're trying to, to, to succeed and they're not, they're getting this physio, there's loss of testosterone, they're like, why, why can't, you know, they're not as quick speaking by and large. If you look at little boys and little girls in kindergarten, little girls can speak much better, right? They can sit in the carpet much better. Now that doesn't mean that you create a jungle gym in kindergarten, but there are some very simple things you can do to, to help boys use their strengths to help them get those skills they need. Well, let me ask you about math, because there was only a slight variation, but boys are doing um, slightly better in math, statistically. And if that's the case, I mean, math isn't taught much differently than, say, science, parochially, teacher in front of a classroom, delivering the lecture. What do you account for that? There's much more manipulation of a lot of things in math and science, and boys like to have that experiential ma manipulation that comes. What do you mean? Um, uh, well, let's say in science, right, where you're actually working with things with your hands a lot of times. And this is not all, all boys only work with their hands, but um, boys also, because of their brain wiring, uh, they tend to see things spatially a little easier than girls. And, and, and that's why we made this effort in the 1990s to help girls do better in math and science by taking into account their strengths. Because uh, for a long time, you didn't see girls go into some of the higher mathematics and engineering as much, right? And part of it had to do with the w because their brains were not um, as developed in some of the spatial things. They did things to help girls improve there. And now you see the levels that we've got. And so again, I, I always take it back from the subjects because the actual subjects that we're learning in school are not the important things. What we're learning in school nowadays, more than 10, 20 years ago, is how to learn, how to become a passionate, confident, independent learner. I'll tell this to any parent, if your son or daughter is a passionate, confident, independent learner, they will succeed. If they are not, even if they get good grades, they will have challenges in the society we're going into. Okay, this is a good segue into your six secrets which you outline um, in your book because the goal for you to tell parents and teachers is to get them to be those passionate, independent learners. So let's go through them. Uh, the first one is movement. Explain that one to me. So boys' brains do wire more for movement um, and uh, they did some really neat studies uh, uh, even of babies, two week old. They had a female and a male baby and they put a mobile, you know, the one that rotates around that's at one end of the, the crib, and at the other end, the mother of the child, the live mother of the child would look over. Well, 80% of the time, the females looked at the mother's face, 80% of the time, the boys looked at the mobile that had more movement. So there wasn't a choice there, right? They were attracted immediately to movement. And if you have a young boy, you know that a truck rumbling past outside <laughs> is going to take all of his attention. He loves to throw things, he loves to th see things smashed together. Boys and girls love video games, but if you look at the kind of video games boys love more than girls, there's a ton of movement and it increases as you go up. So boys' brains wire more for movement and they tend to use movement and their bodies to explore the world more than girls when they're younger. Now, as I explain all of this, 20% of the of girls have this approach as well and everyone's on a continuum. So this is not to box anyone in, but anyone who's had a young boy or girl knows that there's a difference um, in their approach to movement. So how do we use that? Okay, I'm going to give you a simple thing. We're coming into school in a couple weeks. I guarantee you there will be um, some parents who get everything ready and the, the boy has everything he needs and goes off to school and after a couple weeks, the shine is worn off, right? It's just not, he, he, he's not succeeding in school. Um, and so he comes home and he has to do some homework. And it's only learning 10 words, say for English, and uh, he doesn't want to do it. Many parents have this experience of the homework. Well, the teacher says it's supposed to take 10 minutes, but we spent an hour sure. on that. So here's a simple way you use movement. And it almost sounds too simple. You take a ball and you say, okay, uh, tell me the, uh, the first part of the water cycle. It's rain. When he says that, you throw the ball to him. When he has the ball, he can't throw it back until he says the next part or right. the next thing. What's happening is it's stimulating his movement and we're not talking throwing it really hard, we're just talking a little tossing, but it actually engages him. Another way, uh, a lot of parents often say that uh, their sons come home and they won't tell them anything about school or whatnot. Walk with him, get up and walk around the kitchen, do his work. Just that movement will help to stimulate him. And it goes further than that. Males have a metaphorical sense of movement. They need to feel like they're moving ahead. And often when a boy feels stuck, he shuts down. So, that's what parents do in classrooms. We have um, something we call still life, or if you know from your old drama days called tableau, where you freeze in a picture. Sure. We use that in the interim between 
learning a concept and writing a concept where everybody gets up and has to physically resemble the concept, and you can do it with any concept, and then they write. For boys, it taps into their brain wiring for movement and their ability to write, and this is shown. They write much better after they've just gotten up, and, and they're not even bouncing around, right? They're just up and using their, their bodies. Simple things like that are really important, and that's how movement can be uh, really powerful for All more. right, let's go. We, we've got about 10 minutes left, right. so we're gonna, we'll, we'll get through all six of them. Um, let's talk about games, because that's another secret of yours. So game comes from this testosterone release. Boys love games. Games are great ways for them to release testosterone, have these little competitions that they can win. But often, they play their games in gym, not in class. So again, a, a quick... Um, a quick way to do that at home would be to, uh, we call beat the clock. Hey, boy's got a couple of questions to do and his homework. You set a timer. You say, okay, tell me, how long will it take you to do one question? He says it, you set the timer, and then you be quiet and watch him. It's a competitive so he turns thing. It into a game. Right. They, they like that is what you're saying. But what happens is he releases that testosterone. He has that joy not only of winning but connected to learning. And this is probably the most profound thing that I've learned in the research that I've done is that when boys connect to learning, and they connect a little differently than girls in many cases, then they tend to stick with it. But if learning is not powerful for them, and that's why I use game and movement, et cetera, then they won't stick with it as much. And you'll get these boys that I taught when I taught in high school who were finished with learning. And the reason they feel that is not because they don't like learning, it's because deep down they don't feel they're smart. Okay. Humor, which I, I don't know if I could put slash fun, make learning fun. Well, and yes, learning, the, the other two things will make learning fun. Humor, if, if you know boys' humor, and you'll see this as your boys get older, it's strange. It's, you know, it's slapsticky. <laughs> boys are only two. I know, got a long way to go. They, 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 they have a strange sense of humor, right? It's kind of crude, et cetera. If you watch buddy movies now, right? It's all that kind of, there's a lot of movement sure. in it sometimes as well. Well, one of the things I noticed when I did the research was that, um, Humor helps to focus males. It's one of the things that developed on the savannah when they were out there and had to be um, hunting and it was really boring. They had to pay attention to dissonance. Well, they love that slapsticky type of humor, right? Where somebody high is bought low, etc. So you can use humor to focus boys in, in class. Humor is also a way boys bond. Um, uh, the girls, if you have a couple of girls, they, they might be able to relate to each other how they feel. Boys tend to not do that as much, particularly when sure. they're younger, right? Or they make a joke, etc. And and so what happens is they use it to bond with other people. So that a teacher or a parent that just uses humor, and I have a number of things I talk about in the book, um, they get the boy more connected with learning. All right, number four on the list: challenge. Okay, so challenge is like taking games but stretching them over a longer period of time. Um, uh, when they asked the famous mountain climber, why do you want to climb Mount Everest? Well, because it's there. Well, that sounds like a dumb reason, but it's really that male thing of wanting to set these long goals and challenge themselves. They do that in video games. So if you help a boy take up challenges with his learning in class, and this is across any subject, that's why I say, you know, we don't have to focus on one subject. You give more power to him, then he takes up the challenge and you can coach him in, instead of nagging him. And really, if you look at how learning's going today, that's how it's going. Most kids have more information than you or I, at, when they're five years old, than you or I ever had, right? Because of the information age. They also have choice. They choose to learn or not. These things help kids to do that. And, and that brings us to mastery, which is the next one. Um, boys love to master things, but many times you look at a boy who's underachieving and you think, well, he's lazy. He doesn't want to. And yet I saw this where the boy who couldn't, you know, do the three questions on the science test would know every statistic from every player on the Maple Leafs. Mm. What's with that? Why is, why is that so important? Because that's something that he wants to master because it's important to him, right? Sure. And he loves the team. He can get a testosterone release when he knows more than his buddies, right, about the team. So if you understand that, you actually construct things at home or at school where a boy takes on more challenge and mastery himself. And in the book, I have a neat thing where I show parents to actually even have them do that with having him clean his room, et cetera. Um, and, and so those things are really powerful. Now, the last two are more of the upper level ones. You have movement, game, and humor. They're the base. Then you have challenge, mastery, and the final one is meaning. Meaning. So, so explain that one. 
the best way I can say this is that every boy has a hero complex. He wants to be meaningful in the world through what he does. And if you look at boys' love of heroes, it's not just because they are dressed up and they have powers, it's what they do with those powers. One of the things I've seen across uh, education, and I did it too when I was there without as much realization, is not putting enough, enough sense of the her heroism of actually learning in the class. And so what we try and get boys to do, both at home and at school, is to take their learning and do something powerful with it. And the way we do that is turn it into service. In other words, that learning that you have is not just something the teacher wants you to learn. You have noble things that you're going to do with it. And I'll tell you what, that really turns a boy's crank. And I think you're going to show a video soon which talks about how powerful meaning is. And I can comment on that. That's after. interesting. When, when you explain these secrets, they kind of seem obvious in a lot of ways. So why are they secrets? because they have a hidden power that doesn't get used in most educational contexts. And if you're a parent at home and your life is really stressful, you start to use these things with your son, all of a sudden things like oils the, the machine, it just makes things go a lot easier. All right, um, I wanna play uh, a, a bit of tape. This um, tape is a, a commercial for PlayStation 4. It encompasses the six secrets that you talk about. So let's take a look at this. Oh, it's such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. Oh, such a perfect day. You just keep me hanging on. You just keep me hanging on. All right, Dr. Dixon, you attached the, the, the labels there, but all six of your secrets are up there. The movement, the games, the humor, challenge, mastery, and meaning. That's a video game. Many parents tell their boys not to play video games. You're playing too many video games, but it seems to me that you might be suggesting here that video game designers understand boys better than we <laughs> parents or educators do. Do you know that the biggest, largest employer of neuroscientists in North America is not the military or intelligence service, it's the gaming companies, because they understand the power of engagement. And that's why I, when I, the book came out and about three months later I saw that commercial and I'm like, oh my gosh. And the most powerful part is, at the end of it, which is almost subliminal, and I don't know, did you see there was a little tagline right above meaning, Do you, did you remember what it said? I don't. It said, greatness awaits. That's that challenge to that, the heroism in boys? Well, I mean, really, does, does greatness await just in a video game? It, it awaits, we believe, our children in many areas. Video games, something you do. But they shouldn't have the corner of where greatness is. So, what I talk to parents about is, video games, they're there. Boys play them, girls play them, that's fine. I don't really rant against them. I say, understand why they're powerful. Why are they powerful? Because they encompass these six secrets, particularly for boys, and I said, why should they have all the fun? Why shouldn't we take that power? Because you think about it, learning at its base is joyful. There's a lot of work sometimes, but it's often when you have a goal. But prior to that, when you learn, when you learn something new, even in your role here, there's joy to it. Sometimes we squeeze the joy out of that. And what I find, there's so many distractions nowadays is in terms of learning. A boy that progresses up the video game levels is actually learning. He's experienced the joy of learning. So what we want to do is to take the joy that he's getting there and just transfer that to some of the joy that he gets in learning so that he will become that passionate, confident, independent learner. You were in a classroom as a teacher and then a principal. How many years were you a teacher? I was a teacher for um, 28 years. Okay. You have good insight into this stuff. Seems to me, if there's such distinction between the way boys and girls learn, that maybe segregating kids might be an easy answer. I'm not pretending that it's going to happen, but I mean, is that one of the possible solutions? I think that for some, uh, some boys that does work. But I'll tell you, and I consult with boys' schools as well as regular public schools, um, if the teachers aren't using these approaches I'm talking about, it doesn't matter, right? If, if they're just up there and using a very just traditional way of teaching, it doesn't matter if you put all the boys together, you're still gonna have all of the problems in terms of learning. The other thing is, as you mentioned, is that, you know, that's really not a practical thing that's going to happen. Um, and I'm really, because I was a teacher, I'm a pragmatist and a parent, and if I'm a parent or a teacher, I need something that's going to help those boys that I see that are disengaged 
that's going to help them now. And these things do that, but in a way that you can put into a classroom and do with boys and girls, both at school or at home, that you know, they both will enjoy. But the boys will get that extra bit of motivation that they need to be engaged. And uh, we will see them succeeding the way that they need to. Thank you. I was saying before we started taping, I'm keeping your books close to me as I have two young boys and as they start school, I keep all these in mind. Thank you. I I'm just want to remind our viewers they can get more information. Uh, you have a website, right? Yes. So two things. At helpingboyslearn.com, that's where they can get information. But we also have a really cool quiz, which is free to take, and it tells you which of the six secrets your son tends towards early. And so if you know that, you can do some things right away. It's only a two-minute quiz, but I'd invite parents to come and, and, and take that. We also have one for teachers there as okay, well. Okay, we'll get that up on the screen just to remind our viewers. Thank you very much. Nice meeting. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.